So you just bought an Alienware R10, R11, or pre-ordered an R12. Good on you. They're fantastic PCs, but they're not perfect. There's some things that you're going to want to do to them right out of the box to get your experience optimized. About five. Six, technically. I can't count, but there's some things you should do. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, so spoiler alert, I'm sure you didn't see this coming. The majority of these mods are cooling related. The cooling in the R10, R11, and R12 isn't fantastic, and that comes down to the fact that, well, it's bigger than a small form factor case, but it's smaller than a mid-tower, and they only come with one 120mm intake fan and one 120mm exhaust fan. If you are water-cooled on the CPU like I am, basically the water block goes up to the radiator. Uh, it's an AIO and then shoots out of the top like a chimney, which isn't a terrible design because the wedge shape kind of pushes the hot air up and then heat rises obviously and shoots out of the top like a chimney. So the uh, cooling in the R10 and R11 is claimed to be 11% better than previous Alienware models or versions, which I think is true, but better than shitty is still crappy. You're, you're improving from terrible to less terrible, so it's not great. So the first thing you wanna do is install a second intake fan. This is incredibly important. I would also recommend just replacing the one existing intake fan with one of these aftermarket ones here. This is $16 for a four pack. It's from Cooler Master. They are noticeably quieter and do push more air than the stock uh, Dell industrial, you know, parts bin, buy them in bulk special fans. So if you do have a mechanical hard drive in that front tray, in that front three and a half inch caddy, you will need to remove this and replace that with a fan, which kind of leads me into a second point here. If you are shopping for a new R10, R11, or R12, and you are, you know, in the uh, builder and you're selecting your storage, just forego getting a mechanical hard drive. Honestly, they are the cheapest, but that's for a reason. This is dead technology, especially when it comes to flagship high performance PCs. There's no need for this. They draw way more electricity than SSDs or NVMEs. They're substantially slower. They get hot and they get fragmented where you actually have to manually go into Windows and defragment these disks every few months to every few years because they start running all janky. Not to mention these are more prone to failure. And for us, our R series owners, they block the spot where you're gonna be putting a second fan. So. While you're shopping, just don't buy a mechanical hard drive. I did because I was just quickly trying to check out with an R with a 3080 series card and I wasn't paying attention to the storage there, but I knew damn well that I probably wasn't gonna be using a mechanical hard drive. So by the way, I'm not texting on the job, boys. You guys have my full attention, but I have my notes right here so I don't forget anything because I do have two brain cells and a very smooth brain, so it doesn't help. The next thing is to add your own RAM and to overclock it. So it seems like on the builder, it seems like on the builder, Alienware kind of charges a premium for their RAM. Like if you look at the MSRP, the recommended retail for the RAM that they sell, and then what they charge in the builder when you actually apply it, it's well over MSRP, like 30%. So I recommend just getting like their little base 16 gigabyte kit and then upgrading manually. Now you can either, now if you get, now these MOBOs or motherboards do have four RAM slots, so you can just get the 16 gigabyte kit and then buy um, another, two eight gigabyte sticks and literally just click it, clip in two more and then you're at 32 gigs. And that should be absolutely fine for anyone, whether you're 4K video editing, doing some multitasking, some CAD, computer-aided design, and you're using this PC as a workstation. For just gaming, 16 gigabytes is fine. The only time it's not is if you are doing some really in-depth encoding through, for streaming or YouTube, um, YouTube screen recording where you have um, all kinds of encoding going on. You have a webcam with a blurred background. You have over animated overlays and stuff, and you, you have multiple monitors, monitoring chat. Your, your PC might need a little more random access memory to be able to handle all those little minute tasks, but if you're just gaming, 16 gigs is totally fine, even with modern AAA titles. But I would recommend if you are gonna go for 32 or 64 gigs, don't do it through Alienware. Just get the base kit and then upgrade later. And then that brings me into overclocking the RAM. You can squeeze out some more speed or megahertz, the, the timing of your RAM by using ACC or Alienware Control Center, which is over my head right here. Awesome program, uh, basically foregoes the need to install MSI Afterburner as this handles not just GPUs, but lets you overclock, undervolt, handle all of that settings for your CPU, GPU, and RAM, and it's actually really good. I still love you. 
but I do recommend before you put a aggressive overclock on your RAM, you can do a very moderate to conservative overclock on your RAM with the stock cooling, but before you go, go heavy duty with the overclocking of your RAM, install that second fan because that second intake fan is blowing right where the RAM sticks are. And obviously you're overclocking, you're gonna produ be producing more heat as well. <laughs> the next one is installing the DRAM heat sink or heat sinks. There's actually two of them right there on the MOBO or motherboard. Now, if you get a water cooled CPU, then these are already installed. If you get an air cooled CPU, you will need to order these separately. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them on eBay, and you can get them from Dell. That Dell takes a little bit longer to ship to you, but I think it's the cheapest. I think it's uh, $4 for just one or $10 for both of them. And I'm playing a little B-roll showing you what those look like right now. Um, honestly, when you are shopping for one of these R10, 11, or 12s, get a water cooled CPU because you're gonna wanna upgrade that later anyway and it's gonna save you time, energy, and money in the long run just by having Dell install their AIO, which is actually pretty decent. And tying in with that, if you get the water-cooled CPU, um, the, the CPU water cooling, you also get these heat sinks installed. So this is one less mod that you'll have to make. Speaking of the AIO or all-in-one cooler, you are going to want to upgrade the fan on the very top. The exhaust fan, you pop off the top cover and you are gonna want to do a two fan push pull me method to basically push or pull more heat out of the top of your case. And that will kind of complete the cooling trifecta. So you can use the stock AIO, the Dell branded Alienware logoed cooler, but you wanna change the fans for it. And finally, my last cooling mod you absolutely need to do if you are running a 30 series card because a lot of people, most people buying these Alienware PCs right now are pretty much buying pre-builts uh, in lieu of building a PC to get their hands on a 30 series graphics card right now without having to pay scalper prices. You're basically getting a warranty, a whole PC where you can sell, sell your other one to counteract the cost and you're getting a 30 series card. So this goes for all the 30 series cards, but specifically the 3080 and 3090 as they are by a pretty fair margin, the most powerful cards. The VRAM temperature or video memory gets very, very hot. You might just be monitoring the core temperature, which stays relatively low at about 40, 45 at idle and about 60, 60 under load. And that's under a AAA title, uh, heavy gaming at 1440 or 4K. But the VRAM, which is very hard to monitor because most software doesn't show you that temperature, gets very, very hot. When you are doing some extreme gaming, you're looking at about a, over 100 degrees Celsius. And if you are mining, which a lot of people with these 3080s and 3090s will be, as it is very, very lucrative, when you're mining Ethereum, your VRAM temps will get 120 degrees Celsius, which is when the card starts throttling. as a safe mechanism so it doesn't damage itself, it will start tapering back performance, meaning you're not hitting your maximum hash rate, you're not getting the most out of your card, and potentially you're causing long-term damage to your card. You might even get premature failure, where after a few months your card stops working or one of the fans seizes up on you. But granted, that's worst case scenario, most likely more accurately, what's going to happen according to Nvidia reps, is it might take a little bit of life off the back end of the card. So if you plan on having this for several, several years, which a lot of NVIDIA card owners do, look at the fact that people still run 1660s and 1080 Ti's. They, they skipped over the 20 series generation, have no plans of buying a 30 series card. Some people are still holding onto their 10 series cards um, because they're because they built a bond with them. It's like a child, except they don't disappoint you with bad grades. They just disappoint you with bad frame rates. <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, 1080 owners. But what you want to do with these 30 series cards is install aftermarket pads and paste. Now, I recently did this and it lowered my VRAM temperatures 30 degrees Celsius. That's massive, absolutely massive. Now, granted, this is probably a little bit in conjunction with the second intake fan and some of the other mods I've made, but it's mostly the pads and the paste. And what this does is when I'm mining, my hash rate stays at about 100, 100 mega hash per second. And my temps went from 120 to 90, big difference there. So basically, in my opinion, if you can get the cooling locked down, which isn't great in the case here, these are fantastic PCs. They really are really, really good pre-built, especially because Dell slash Alienware runs sales on these quite a bit 
where there's, granted, they sell out quickly. It's like the PS5 and the Xbox series. You have to be quick on the draw to get these bad boys uh, whenever they do a drop. But if you can get one of these with a 30 series card, with a brand new i7 or i9 in it, um, with the storage solution that you want in there, with the RAM, like I said, cheap out on the RAM, upgrade it later. But um, a lot of times they run sales on these where you can pick them up very cheap, like cheaper than the other pre-built companies like the HP Lenovo and I like the HP Omen and the Lenovo and uh, NZXT is pretty good. But still, you can get a really solid PC for a really reasonable price. All the video tutorials going over all the mods that I mentioned in this video are linked below. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me to grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming in YouTube. See, streaming and YouTubing. See you guys in the next one. Yeah.